In this video, we're going to see how to set up the actual application. So in Spider, once again, I'm starting by importing tkinter and everything from it. And eventually we're going to be using a function in NumPy, so I'm going to import that too. We're going to start this a little differently than we have been starting our other tkinter apps. We're going to place everything in a class. And I'm going to call it the refi eval class. Okay, so encapsulating things in a class is just going to make it easier for us to get access to the different elements throughout the application. The first thing we need in our class is an initializer. Okay, it comes with one by default, but we're much better off to define our own. It has to start with two underscores and end with two underscores. All right, other than that, it looks pretty much just like a function. All right, since it's inside a class, we call it a method. And this is what we call when we want to construct the refi eval object. All right, we're not going to use it exactly like you would in object oriented programming, but more or less that's what we're doing here. All right, and every class has a self reference and it's just called self. It's called self by default, but you can redefine this to be whatever you want. The convention is to just call it self. All right, so when I initialize this one, I'm going to set up my window. Okay, I'm going to give it a title this time. Okay, we'll call it the refinance evaluator. And then I'm going to start placing some widgets. All right, so I'm going to have a label. And it's not necessary to assign them to variable names. So if I'm not going to use it for anything later, uh, then there's no need to give it a name, a variable name. I'll place it in the window. I'll give it some text. And then I can directly place it. And we'll make it row one, column one. And I'm going to set another property. If I just set this in the window, by default, it's going to be centered. All right, so this window is going to be quite a bit wider than what we've been looking at. And so I don't want it centered. I want it to be sort of glued to the left wall. All right, and in T Kenter, uh, the property that does that is the sticky, and it's on the west. All right, if I wanted it right aligned, I would sticky it uh, to the east. All right, and then there's a north and a south too. Okay, essentially I'm going to do that three times, just changing the text. So I'll copy and paste this line. All right, so we're gonna input the interest rate and it's no longer gonna be in row one because it would sit right on top of the other one. So it's gonna be row two, column one, sticky west. Okay, a third, very similar. And this is gonna be the term. All right, so how long is the loan gonna be? Uh, once again, we just change the row. This time it's three. All right, I'm going to put a placeholder in for row four. So text is going to be none. Row is going to be four. And then I'm going to put a couple of labels for the outputs. All right, so we're going to do this in stages. The first thing we're going to do is put in the uh, refinance offer. So how much are you borrowing? What's the interest rate? How long? And then we're going to output the, the new loan payment. And then we're going to go ahead and create another section where we compare the new loan to the old loan and see if it's a favorable refinance option. Okay, so the outputs again are going to be labels and we'll get the payment. This is going to be row five and then we'll get the total of the payments. So how much will we pay back if we hold the loan to maturity? Okay, row six. Okay, so that's a pretty good start. Let's uh, run our main loop. Okay, and to execute or call the class, we're just going to call it. Okay, so with that, we can run it and see what it looks like. And there's our start. We can see everything is left aligned. And now it's just waiting uh, for some boxes that we can type in over here and maybe a button that we're going to click to calculate the payment and the total payments. 
So in our next video, we're going to see how to add user input.